In this video, I'll be showing you how to time align your drums so that everything arrives at the same time. So the idea here is that you're lining up all of your individual instrument mics on the drum kit with the overhead mics because the sound will arrive at your overhead mics last. So if you delay all of your individual mics, your kick, snare, hat, toms, all that good stuff um, to line up with your overheads, the theory is that everything will sound better because it'll be more phase coherent. So the first thing we'll need to do is record our drums and here we've used Pro Tools and you'll also need a digital console that you're playing back on and mixing on because you need to delay each channel individually. So here we're using the Venue and Pro Tools to do that. And just to make things a little easier, I also had the drummer hit each drum individually once for me. So he went kick, snare, hat, and then each tom individually. The first thing we'll do in Pro Tools is change our main counter to be in samples so that when we highlight something we can see the length in samples and this is the unit that we'll be using to delay things on the venue. So now we'll pull our overhead left mic up beside the kick drum mic and we'll zoom in to the kick drum transient here. And then we'll go ahead and make our track height a little bigger so that we can see the transient easier. And then now we'll keep zooming in until we can clearly see the beginning of the transient in both mics. Sometimes this can be a little confusing um, because your polarity might be different. So you can kind of see here that the kick drum mic starts going up in its transient while the overhead left goes down. Um, but this is the same hit. So we'll go ahead and highlight to there, highlight that difference. And it looks like we're at 153 samples. So we'll go ahead and take note of that. Now you'll also note that you might want to invert the polarity on your kick drum mic because of this difference or in your overhead mics um, so that your phase will line up properly. So now we'll move on to the second kick drum mic because we're using two different mics here. And we made that uh, larger so we can see it. And then we'll go ahead and zoom in here and you can kind of see the same thing going on uh, where the kick drum mic, the transient starts going up while in the overhead it goes down first. So we'll zoom in and we will highlight that area so that we know the difference in time. And it looks like we're at about 149 samples here, so pretty close to the other mic, which makes sense because the mics are very close together inside the drum. All right, now we'll move on to the snare top. Make the kick smaller, find that transient, and then we will drag our overhead track down beside that snare track and make it large so that we can see it. All right, so this one's a little easier. The transients are going the same way. So we know that we don't have to invert our polarity on anything to get it to line up properly. So in this case, I'll choose the zero crossing um, before the big transient starts here and highlight that area. And we're looking at 129 samples. So we'll take note of that. And now we'll move on to the snare bottom mic. So you see here that these do look a little different. Uh, the transients look pretty different. So what I'm going to do is pick the beginning of the transient because I had the drummer start in silence. Highlight that difference. And we're at about 104 samples here, so we'll take note of that. And now we'll move on to the hi-hat. So we'll find our hi-hat hit and we will zoom in on the overhead and the hi-hat mics here. Go ahead and uh, make our hi-hat channel a little bigger so we can see what's going on. And then we'll zoom in until we try and find a nice spot to see both transients 
on the tracks. And then we will just highlight the difference here. Looks like we're at about 120 samples, so we'll go ahead and make note of that. All right, and now we'll go ahead and make that small and move on to our toms. So we'll pull the overhead track down beside tom one, make it bigger to see it. And then we'll go find the tom hit. And we'll zoom in here and find a good transient. This is a nice easy one, so we'll go ahead and just zoom in to the zero crossing before the transient. Highlight that, and we're at 104 samples. All right, now we'll move on to Tom 2, move our overhead channel down. Make Tom 2 a little bigger and find that hit. And then we will zoom in and find the transient. Another nice easy one. So we'll pick the zero crossing here before the big transient. Highlight that area and we're at 125 samples. All right, so we have all of our delay values now. We've taken note of those. So now we can go over to our console and put those values in on the individual channel strips. So we'll start on our first kick channel, which was the 901, and our delay value here is 153 samples. Put that in and turn that on. We'll move on to our second kick channel, and the delay value there is 149 samples. We'll put that in and we'll turn that on. We'll move on to our snare top, and that one is 129 samples. And then onto our snare bottom, which is 104 samples. And then our hi hat was 120 samples. We're going to put that in. And then we'll move on to our toms. Tom one was 104 samples. And then Tom 2 was 125 samples. All right, and that's all we need to do in the console. Now, if you're using plugins, this does throw things off a bit. So for the purpose of this illustration, we're not using any plugins. But if you were using plugins on the venue, then you need to take that into account. And what you need to do is go to your plugin rack. If you right click on the plugin in your plugin rack, it will tell you how many samples of delay that plugin is adding to that channel. So you'll subtract that number from your delay value uh, that you took in Pro Tools. So, and then you also need to take into account your overheads. If you have a plugin on there, then you need um, to consider that as well because that will, again, affect your time alignment. So the math gets a little trickier there, but not too bad. You can figure that out. So now we'll listen to a sample. And what you'll probably hear on here is that there's not really a very big difference honestly. Um, I'm using minimal EQ on my channels and I have all the mics up at a pretty decent level so you can definitely hear the hi-hat mic and the overhead mics and um, the toms and everything else and there's a little difference um, that you can hear in headphones but honestly in the room uh, you really don't hear anything. So this is a cool exercise um, and a lot of studio guys use this but live you know, it's debatable if it's really useful at all. Um, but now you know how to do it if you want to do it. So take a listen and you'll see I have two snapshots, um, one with the delay on and one with the delay off. So uh, when you see the on snapshot recalled, you're hearing all the delays in. And then when you hear the off snapshot, uh, you're not hearing any of the time alignment going on. So take a listen. <laughs> 